All right, guys, welcome to the new 1003. So you can see on your screen the form. Uh, you're going to see a lot of areas that are really uh, ones that you recognize that, that were the same on the previous form. So you'll see some of those. We'll talk about really the differences, and uh, you'll see a lot of interesting things here. Now, if you've seen this before, uh, you may still pick up on some new things uh, in the form itself. But uh, it's not only the new Humda data. You'll also see a lot of anti-fraud uh, statements um, and requirements in filling this out. So you know, we start at the top. You can see the borrower information. Uh, in addition to name, you have alternate names. Um, and over to the right, social number, date of birth, and uh, residency status, right? Uh, down here, you see individual or joint. So just laid out a little bit uh, differently and uh, names of the borrowers, uh, if there are other borrowers that are applying for a loan as well. Over here you see married, unmarried, and separated, except you see a lot more detail under unmarried. And uh, actually in one of our group discussions on this, uh, we noted uh, one of the people in the group actually looked up this registered reciprocal beneficiary relationship. And uh, the rest of them are pretty straightforward, but uh, this one is unique and uh, actually in the state of Hawaii, uh, you cannot be uh, legally married as a same-sex couple. However, you can register and that's where that registered reciprocal beneficiary relationship comes from uh, and you would think that that would be to qualify uh, for beneficiary uh, types of benefits. So insurance and, and that type of thing. Contact information over to the right, current address, uh, you can see here if someone has no primary housing expense, uh, they have to state that there. Uh, so again, collects a little bit more information, makes it a little bit more clear, and we'll talk about the potential implications of that uh, at the end of this as well. Next section you see here, uh, as far as personal info, is military service. So are you currently serving in the United States Armed Forces? Either yes or no. Uh, this not only includes the borrower, uh, but do, did you or your deceased spouse ever serve? So uh, surviving spouse, you can see, is the last option here. So you're laying out you know, the VA eligibility uh, here, or at least some of the initial pieces of it. Current employment and self-employment is going to have a lot of the same types of things. However, a couple things. One, notice that you've got the employment information on the left and the in income information on the right. So they're right in the same place, which makes sense. Um, and a little bit more clear than maybe how it's laid out now. Uh, here you can see someone has to check if they're employed by a family member, property seller, real estate agent, or other party to the transaction. Again, kind of requiring that level of disclosure that's uh, much higher than what we have today. Uh, here, someone has to check if they are self-employed and then declare the ownership interest. In other words, specifically answer these saying it's less than 25 or more than 25%. And then you can see the monthly income or loss listed here. So uh, the next section is just a, uh, uh, if there's another uh, job that we're also considering in here, we would see that information here, all the same sections. If it's um, previous employment that's making up uh, the two years, you can see that would be listed here, and only gross monthly income uh, would be listed, and here self-employed uh, or business owner indicated as well. Now, in this section where you have income and later when you see assets as well, you're going to see a lot of these listed here. Um, you could say that uh, these are a good reminder uh, for all of us as experienced people. They can also be a great benefit for somebody new coming into the industry, as you might imagine, to kind of have that info right here. And then under income source is where that is going to be indicated. In other words, using one of these descriptors from the top, we're going to say exactly what that source of income is and, and put in a number from there, right? Uh, the one that really stands out is uh, and it's kind of a... Uh, is uh, it kind of a, you know reminds us to account for MCC here. Uh, we also see mortgage payment differential listed, uh, royalty payments if we're that fortunate, right? Uh, but yeah, you can see there's a lot of different information that kind of prompts the use of this specific source. Assets works the same way in that we have the list here, and uh, there are both usual and customary types of assets, but also reminders on maybe some unusual assets 
and following the same protocol, we would select those uh, from the dropdown and then fill in the rest of the information. Other assets also uh, work here. If uh, this would not apply, then checking the do not apply box uh, cancels that out. Liabilities uh, coming over from the credit report and the account type also coming uh, from the drop down using this list above revolving installment open lease. Um, but again, unless it's being manually entered, uh, that should be flowing in from the credit report and then indicating any that are being paid off. Other liabilities and expenses prompt alimony, child support, separate maintenance, or job related expenses. And um, the financial information or the REO section comes next, uh, where someone would have to declare if they don't, and then uh, list the uh, property being right refinanced first if this is in fact a refi. So uh, you can see the cal calculation of net monthly rental income here, uh, the loan type listed down here, and what have you. So additional properties um, also listed here. Next up is the loan and property information. You can see again some customary types, but also a new one, FHA secondary residence would be indicated here. Uh, also here, it's declaring, is this a mixed use property? Yes or no. Is this a manufactured home? Yes or no. <clears throat> and then as you come down here, you see uh, other new mortgage loans on the property you're buying or refinancing, rental income on the property you wanna purchase, uh, gifts and grants, uh, listed here along with the source selected from the drop down, and then whether those funds are deposited or not. So you see a lot more information here. When we get to the declarations, we're really seeing a lot of familiar information, but a couple things that we'll point out here are new. Um, one is this uh, in B, if uh, this is a purchase transaction, do you have a family relationship or a business affiliation with the seller of the property and you have to say yes or no. Um, in the next one you see more information, more anti-fraud, uh, where you see are you borrowing any money for this real estate transaction, i.e. closing cost, down payment, or obtaining any money from another party such as the seller or realtor that you have not disclosed on this application. And uh, yes or no, and then if it's a yes, what's the amount? Right. Uh, also, you're saying uh, or the borrower is stating if they have applied for a mortgage loan on another property that will be closing on or before this transaction that's not disclosed on this loan application. These are really some make sense questions as uh, you read through this to really, uh, you know, make people specify to a higher level exactly what they're doing and making sure that there's uh, you know, no, no prohibited activities that are taking place. Um, or in the next one here, have you or will you be applying for any new credit on or before closing this loan that is not disclosed on this application? Again, yes or no. Is there anything that could interfere with the first lien position? And then below, uh, you see the uh, normal uh, information that we would normally expect here, except if uh, someone's declared bankruptcy, what type would be indicated here? Uh, the acknowledgements and agreements go through uh, some information as far as electronic records and more importantly, electronic signatures, uh, the value of the property, um, delinquency, um, use and sharing of this information, and then you can see the borrower's signature and date at the bottom. When we get to the demographic info, here's really where we see the new Humda rule kind of rooted in the 1003. And uh, we have what uh, the regulators have termed disaggregated race and ethnicity options. Um, so, you, you know, short version is you can select more than one or the borrower can indicate more than one and, and the LO can record that. Um, and you can go into further level of detail. As you can see here under Hispanic or Latino, it provides for uh, going deeper into that. So uh, we joke, uh, if they're Cuban, can you ask them if they have any good uh, connections for cigars, right? Uh, only kidding, but you can see how this works as we go through and check some of these. And, um, and then even here on the other, uh, some, some prompted examples of a further description of that as ethnicity over here or a race here on the other side. So uh, the thing that we uh, remember from doing the 1003 is if someone is in front of us and they choose not to provide uh, this information, 
then um, then as an LO, if it's a face-to-face -face, uh, interview, then uh, the LO is required to guess based on visual observation or surname, right? And uh, the important thing to know with the new 1003, uh, what we're hearing uh, is that the major category is what the LO would guess if it's not being provided by the borrower, okay? So in other words, the LO would not have to guess anything deeper in this case than just the general category of race and ethnicity, uh, they wouldn't have to go uh, any deeper than just that uh, first general category. So you can also see do not wish to provide indicated up here and then uh, indicate uh, the LO if these were uh, determined by visual observation or surname. Face-to-face -face interview and the, the uh, relevant contact information here at the bottom and that wraps it up. So uh, the question is what's your overall impression? Do you think it's better? Do you think it's worse? You can see the layout, and uh, if you say, hey, this looks like the LE and the CD from the graphic design uh, perspective, you know, you are correct. Uh, this is uh, the same uh, layout and same kind of graphic design uh, with a lot of white space, uh, you know, very, very readable, very easy to understand, uh, you know, uh, terminology and the layout of the form as well. And then also reorganizing some of the info like we talked about where you have employment and income right next to each other. So uh, good luck with this and uh, hope this information was helpful.